Hi. So recurring question lately. Why don't you do like cycling videos on YouTube? Like well, first, I never really had a cycling audience on YouTube. Actually, Instagram is like the first platform that I have a cycling audience, which, you know. You know, social media was like a way for me to get away from the RCC slash Strava annoying people you know what i'm yeah yeah when i said that you felt that i know but aside of riding bikes <laughs> aside of riding bikes uh... <laughs> actually i like to do other stuff too so like but i've got similar recurring messages of people suggesting requesting or asking you should really do cycling videos on youtube and i didn't want to because like fact number one cycling is like one of the smallest niches on the internet second uh YouTube pays, <clears throat> unlike, you know, Instagram. It's kind of like, the more views you get, the more you make. So, there's a lot of work into a YouTube video. I'm not saying that there isn't with Instagram. I feel like photography and video making, it's like road cycling and cross-country skiing. Like, one can go with the other. It requires similar skills, you know, but they're still two different sports. Like, it's not the same. And, you know, after spending hours of editing and and like having to start all over again because your phone doesn't have enough storage. <laughs> Despite having two terabytes of cloud. You know, that's a thing with people who make videos. It doesn't matter what storage you have. Like you need fans to prevent your computer from overheating and your iPhone most likely end up in the freezer. Like that storage says it's full. That's how you know it's yours. Wait, don't you have like professional equipment to film? It's 2020. Like your audience is gonna stare at a 9x16 or a 1x1. Your iPhone will do just fine. Like, let me get this $8,000 DSLR camera to post 1x1 tiny shots, you know? Cause what if it ends on Times Square? You wish? I do. Back to that bike racist thing. I looked into doing cycling videos on YouTube. The payout for the amount of work isn't there yet. But I said, you know what? They asked nicely and politely, so let's give that a shot. So like, feel free to play the video on repeat while you work from home in the back, you know? J just an idea like that. <laughs> I third reason, the sad one, but true. Cyclists in general don't want a women to tell them how to ride their bikes. Yeah, man, but women too men in general don't like a young person or women to tell them how to ride their bikes and live their life and i happen to be a woman and young so like the only people who actually listen are the other young women you know like the other chicks who have like over 10k followers on some platforms and also ride bikes you know because we can kind of relate you felt that? I know you did. I'm not playing the victim here, but like... It's like, no melting snowflakes here, that's illegal. Yeah, not playing the victim here is just facts. The marketing concept wasn't there, you know. Anyway. But like I said, since you asked uh, nicely, well, I decided to give that a shot, you know? See what happens. And I don't know, maybe it's gonna make someone's day, so like... Maybe. It's one more person happy, right? That's always the goal. So, this first video, we're gonna do a, ta -ta brrr, pshu, a react video. Uh, hey, that video was like a two for one, chill out. But I think you guys are gonna enjoy this, so we're gonna watch it together. Cycling is a beautiful sport. It's one man on his mechanical machine going as fast as possible on the open roads with nothing backing him up except his willpower. 50 personnel and a dozen teammates who are there to hard carry right until the end. Yep so he can win. But road racing and grand tour riding isn't the topic for today, because we're here to talk about cycling, which isn't the same thing. We're here to talk about what happens when you, an everyday citizen of the sidewalk, decides to buy a bike. And it's one of three things. You become a commuter, you become a cyclist, or you sell it on Craigslist after a month and see if something else works. Okay, this ought to be good now. Regardless of which camp you fall into, the first step of buying a new bike is always the same, which is to gain at least 50 pounds, because the more obese you are when you buy a new bike, the more upvotes you'll get when you take a picture with it. So once you've got some mad reddit karma, what you might notice in the real world is that while cyclists don't consider themselves commuters, most commuters do consider themselves cyclists. Facts. 
And while most pedestrians and drivers think they're all the same as well, it's really not the case. Simply put, commuters ride bicycles as a means to an end for going to the grocery store and back again, or to get them to and from work each day. This contrasts starkly with the cyclist who doesn't go to and from <laughs> work saddle. anymore because he quit his job to have more time on the bike, living solely off the college fund for his kids he'll never have after his wife divorced him. The commuter is someone who always don't feel targeted. I didn't make this video. Lives in fear, and every day he walks to the bike rack thinking to himself, Oh man, I hope my bicycle hasn't been stolen again. Whereas, despite not owning a lot to save weight, <laughs> the cyclist is not. Uh, why is this bike fit so accurate? Wow. I gotta send that to someone not fear his bike will be stolen, because that would mean the thief would have to wait until he got off the bike first, which hasn't happened for years. Unlike the commuter, the cyclist does not fear vehicles, as he has come to terms with his own mortality. That if his life were to end after a middle-aged mother in an SUV t-bones his cervello while he's running a red light on the way to the start line of his local Cat 3 crit, so be it. Okay, a cyclist did this video. A life of safety, that is to say, the life of a commuter, requires an ultimate sacrifice. And that sacrifice is speed. A sacrifice that no cyclist would ever make. Instead, risking his own collarbones and supple skin to the harsh reality of the pavement. In fact, there's only one thing that a true cyclist fears, and that is the fear of nature itself. More specifically, winds over 10 kilometers an hour coming from the front and or sideward direction. Accordingly, the first dictum of cycling is clear. Arrow is everything. Would you trade arrow for lightweight? Here's the question. I would say lightweight is more like everything, but then after it's like arrow, although... It's debatable that eyelashes are arrow, but you put glasses over it, so like, I don't know. In fact, the cyclist will, and must, do everything in his wallet to ensure that he and his bicycle are as light and aerodynamic as possible. Okay, let me clarify this. If you don't ride bikes, because yeah, there are people on other platforms that are following me that don't ride bikes necessarily. You know the tiny spoke that's like inside the wheel, that tiny piece of metal? That goes like 20 bucks. Your socks are like 40 bucks. I, I looked at the price of like cycling stuff. Man, that, that sport's expensive as hell. Like, you know the pulleys? Okay, like the derailleur, that's the thing in the back that changes your your chain, you know, for the speeds. Okay, there's like two little pulleys at the bottom. There's like oversized one that are like $600 for pulleys that roll on a chain. If you really look at it like that, it's insane. But we still spend the damn money for it. Like, not. And that means the cyclist must abide by the following checklist. Bicycle. Exactly 6.8 kilograms as per UCI regulations. The cyclist has not ridden in any UCI sanctioned events, but has met several people who have visited Europe. Protective gear. <laughs> While cycling is certainly low impact on your knees, it's not low impact on your skull. Hence why cyclists need to have this. A tiny brain. Which they use to avoid traffic that will kill them instantly under any form of contact. Legs. Shaved. Arms. Shaved. Face. Beard. Body. T-Rex. Clothing. Not White really. lycra to exert dominance over the peloton with your massive bulge. Black lycra on recovery rides to arouse subtle intrigue. All other <laughs> rides must be performed in light wash cutoff jeans. Saddlebag. Absolutely not. A saddlebag is not arrow. Just get your dumb estique, aka anyone else on the group ride, to carry your extra shit. That's me. Power meter. One to measure your bike and one to measure the power level of other cyclists. Now, one of the most important parts of being on a bike is being on Strava, which tracks your rides and lets you compete with your friends. And while this is all well and good, a true cyclist, of course, doesn't have any friends, using Strava only to compare his wattages to real professionals and to see when Puck Moonen is within Tinder radius of a cafe and a bike rack. Now, if you're not a cyclist, at this point you might be thinking, Oh my god, my, my husband recently bought a bike off Craigslist, but 
I thought we were a good couple. I just want to have a life together, to have kids together. Is he just going to be away all the time as I raise the children by myself? Their only memory of their father being the weekend he came home to teach them to ride a bike without training wheels? And no, you're getting way ahead of yourself because once again, a cyclist would never have kids in the first place as pregnant women are not aero. <laughs> And while becoming a cyclist is something we can all aspire to achieve, it is important to point out that if you're still young, don't try to rush it. Most true cyclists are in fact well into their 40s or even 50s. And you might be thinking, wait, isn't that well past my physical prime? And yes, it certainly is. But being a cyclist isn't about athletic ability. Being a cyclist is about being at an age where you can quit your dental practice and still have the money to fly to Alpe d'Huez with your lightweight climbing bike so you can take a helicopter to the top and only do the descents. Facts. FYI, if you decide to ride a bike as being younger, the only difference is that you get to speak like a 40-year-old when you're like 15. I've seen some lately. I didn't realize how scary it was. Like, you talk to them, you feel like you're talking to adults, and you have to, like, keep reminding yourself that you're talking to, like, middle schooler, like, high schooler, even younger than that. I've met some, it's, like, scary how adult they sound. But yeah, what it does is you end up having friends that are like your parents' age, if not older, and everybody think it's weird, but I guess it's people you can learn from, at least. Leave the Tour de France and Olympic track cycling to the kids, who ride their bike purely as a means of self-suffering, hoping they may one day get to keep one of the $15,000 custom bikes their sponsors force them to ride. Alas, they will not, because those bikes have a weight limit of about 270 pounds, and you wouldn't be a real cyclist if you didn't take up every ounce. Unfortunately, while the sport of tour riding is still tainted by the drug scandal... Lance Armstrong and competitors are monitored more closely than ever before. <laughs> he has like pancake syrup in the middle. <laughs> oh my god. Or such is not the case for the cyclist who lives a life of freedom, ordering as many over the counter steroids from Egypt as he pleases, writing it off as a business expense, gotcha. and doping his blood until it's indistinguishable from his Aunt Jemima energy gel. Because unlike his peers, the cyclist is a risk taker a visionary, an achiever, and knows that he must do whatever it takes to finish middle of the pack at the annual charity 60 miler. Yeah. Now, if you're looking to truly immerse yourself in cycling culture, you can try out our sponsor, ExpressVPN, which allows you to securely reroute your IP address to over 150 locations in 90 different countries with just one click. I know it's like a sponsored thing, but I've tried ExpressVPN, they're actually really good, just they are not paying me, I pay them to use their service, I use it like a normal person, they're cheap, so yeah, they're good. I personally use it to reroute my IP to the UK, so when I virtually ride in London on Zwift, I literally am virtually in London. Alternatively, you can stay on your couch and browse Netflix or any streaming service from whatever country you want, letting you bypass any location restrictions with all your personal information safely encrypted. Additionally, ExpressVPN has 24-7 customer support, which you can use for technical <laughs> questions or just when you're going through hard times. So if you'd like to try out the service and see how you can get three months for free, you can go to expressvpn.com com forward slash casually explained or you can click the link in the description below wow. all right don't forget to like subscribe comment thanks for watching yeah bye